Okay, now as we get closer to launch, development continues down here at Starbase Texas to shape this growing city into a truly unique place to live and work. And part of being a city, particularly one surrounded by nature, is environmental stewardship. The nearby Boca Beach dunes have unfortunately been eroding at an alarming rate for some time, so SpaceX is teaming up with Cameron County and the city of Starbase to stop that erosion and hopefully preserve the beach for years to come. Yeah, and as one of its first permanent residents and someone who's actually called Starbase home for over three years now, I can tell you the beach totally adds to the uniqueness and awesomeness of living here. Starbase is truly unlike any other place on Earth. You know, where else can you see the world's biggest rocket every single day? Yeah, Starbase is definitely the place to be. And we're always looking for more people to come help build the future of spaceflight. Yeah, particularly engineers, especially for our propulsion and mechanical system teams. You could be working on tests just like these ones, proving out the designs of our next generation super heavy booster. Fun fact, we actually tested the booster to 13,400 tons of thrust, which is more than the power of three and a half Saturn V rockets, uh, which is just crazy. We're also looking for civil and structural engineers to help literally build the future. Whether it's buildings like the Gigabase currently going up at both Starbase and the Cape, each is a massive vertical integration and assembly facility with over 700,000 square feet of workspace. workspace. Both sites are currently in progress, actually going vertical as we speak. Or you could be designing the Starship launch sites of the future. There's really no shortage of future to build here. So visit SpaceX.com forward slash careers to see all of our openings if you're interested. Okay, now as we head into terminal count, all eyes are on the rocket. Dan, how are we looking? Are we green? Amanda, we are so green. Everything's still looking really good. So we've got a green range, not tracking any blockers there to launch. We're continuing to load prop on board the vehicle. We're just about to close out. So we'll close out uh, again, just about three minutes and 20 seconds before liftoff. We'll close out on ship and then booster just about 30 seconds later. And then you end up with about 11 million pounds of liquid propellant on board those two stages. After we're fully loaded on the vehicle, the pad itself gets ready for launch. We do what's called pushbacks. We clear all that prop out of the lines in the tower uh, and the feed system back into the tanks to get ready for launch. And then in the next couple of minutes, we're going to do our final GNC guidance, navigation, and control system alignment. We're going to arm the automatic flight safety system. And then we're going to do final kind of wiggle checks on the steering for the engines, which we might be able to catch a quick peek at as we get closer to those. If we need to hold, which we are not currently tracking a reason to, that would happen at T minus 40 seconds. It's built into our countdown. We can pause and wait there for any final checkouts, anything that we need to hold for. Once we pass that T minus 40 seconds, a number of events will occur in rapid succession. The ground spin and ignition systems come up to flight pressure and ship switches to internal power. After that, the quick disconnect arm lockout is removed in preparation for retraction shortly after T zero. Now, once we pass T minus 40 seconds, if any problems come up, we do still have the ability to recycle the count under certain conditions back to T minus 40 seconds and hold there to assess what happened and then see if we can proceed again to lift off. Yep. However, once the water for the deflector system begins flowing at T minus 10 seconds, any issue after that would be an automatic scrub for the day as teams would need to refill the deflector's water tanks as well as the propellant storage tanks at the tank farm before making another attempt. All right, we are coming up on three minutes away from launch. You can see the frost line all the way up. We've just closed out prop load uh, onto uh, the ship booster coming up shortly. Yeah, in about 10 seconds, we'll finish loading prop on the booster. And then again, we'll have about 11 million pounds of that liquid oxygen, uh, liquid methane on board the vehicles. Not currently tracking a reason to hold at T minus 40. It can pop up at the last moment or after we pass that gate. We can always hang out there for a couple of minutes uh, if we need to. Um, we do have some extra time. We're not constantly topping off the propellant in these vehicles. So we have about a seven, eight minute window where we can wait. Uh, for any final issues to clear. We're not currently tracking a reason to hold there. Again, our range continues to be green as we look at sea and airspace both out over the Gulf and in our reentry zone out in the Indian Ocean. All right, two minutes, 15 seconds to go. A lot of things on tap 
for Flight 11, plan to be the last launch of this version of Starship and Super Heavy. Once again, we're really focused on getting ship over to reentry. Once we get to that phase, we're going to dive in. There's a lot of exciting stuff that's going to be happening on our way back through uh, and down to the ground, hopefully out in the Indian Ocean. Minute 45. Should hopefully be seeing. There's a quick wiggle check. Checking out the thrust vector control, the steering on the booster. We use those inner 13 engines. Doing their fun final dance before the big show. And we'll do that one more time after we cross that T minus 40 gate. All right, range continues to be green. Still not tracking any issues on vehicle or pad. One minute to go. As a reminder, we can we can hold at T minus forty. We're not planning to. All right. We're through T minus forty. Let's listen in. Flight Director Ty Huntington back in the seat. Take us through the final Flight seconds directors until go for launch. Two minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Go super heavy. Go starship. Thanks for all the historic flights, bad one. Eagles catch you downrange. Booster Raptor chamber pressure nominal. Booster and ship nominal power and telemetry. All right, we are about 45 seconds into flight. We're still getting the rattle here at Star Factory. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it arcs across the Gulf. Coming up next on Max Q. Max Q. So at this point, we've passed through that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. The next thing we're looking forward to is going to be hot staging. So we've got 33 out of 33 Raptors lit. Super Heavy makes its way uphill. Hot staging is going to be coming up uh, in just a little over a minute. At that point, we're going to see all but three of those Raptor engines on Super Heavy shut down. Our version of Miko. Uh, most engines cut off instead of main engine. And then after that, we're going to release the clamps that are currently holding Starship to that hot stage adapter. It's then going to ignite its six Raptor engines to push it away from Super Heavy and then start making its flight uphill. So in about 30 seconds, we're going to see the engine start to shut down on Super Heavy. You'll see them kind of shut off in separate banks until we've just got those three center engines that never stop running for this process, and then looking for six ship raptors. All right. Miko coming up in about 10 seconds. See the engines throttling down. Who's running cut off? Ship ignition. Ship 
Stage separation. Use back burn startup. All right, successful hot staging maneuver. So we've got 12 of the 13 engines lit back up on boosters, so it's doing its boost back. Real, real excitingly, ship though, we've got six out of six Raptors lit on ship there, so it's now going to continue to make its ascent into outer space. Meanwhile, this boost back is happening. We're using those 13 engines, uh, so everything, well, 12 out of the 13, and then we go down to three, and then we're going to shut down for the end of boost back. That's sending super heavy back ship towards its planned splashdown zone in the Gulf. Right after we finish this boost back burn, we're also going to separate the hot stage. This will be the final time boost that we're doing down. this. Is All right, there's the end of the boost back burn. We should be seeing the hot stage. There. So the hot stage separates. It's going to make its way down, also splash down in the gulf. In the meantime, though, these six ship raptors are going to continue fire, firing for about five more minutes. Next up for the booster, though, is going to be its landing burn. There's a cool tracking shot. We dumped some of the prop out on our way back in. All right, so for booster, this is one of the main things we're trying to get is going to be this landing burn. Oh, that's... So you can see the hot stage kind of making its way towards the very the left side. So that's the bottom of the booster. It's about to pass right in front of where you can see some of that prop dump happening. They look like they're close together, but there's a good amount of distance between them. And the hot stage will go down and splash down in the gulf while the booster comes back for its landing burn. Starship is on nominal trajectory. All right. Looking good on our trajectory, looking good on everything. Jake and Amanda, are you guys with me down there? Yeah, definitely. The crowd is, is gathering over here in the office. You can definitely feel the energy in here. Um, great to see that booster is making its way down to the splashdown zone in the Gulf. Yeah, the shaking down here was absolutely nuts. The windows are still there, still intact. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. But yeah, booster's coming down. We're at about 30 booster kilometers, about... Sick. All right, yeah, and as we approach that landing, uh, just like tower catches, we will be doing a 13-engine landing burn to slow down. This time it will be in a V3 configuration. And as we're starting to get into the denser part of the atmosphere, the booster is using four hypersonic grid fins to guide itself through atmospheric entry towards its landing site. And we're just Should about 20 seconds away from landing burn start where we'll ig first ignite the center 13 engines then bring that down to five to slow down the booster for landing and finally that will come down to three and we'll cut all of them off while we're still about 200 meters in the air so booster is going to see a bit of a part of it. booster landing burn start up Booster landing burn shut down. And there we heard it. Booster landing burn shut down. We saw a 13 to 5 to 3 V3, V3 demonstration. And into the water we go. Wow. That was absolutely awesome. If you can even hear us right now, congrats to the whole <laughs> SpaceX team. So far, so good for today. That was incredible. <laughs> All right, great stuff, guys. I'm jealous of the crowd. All right, back to ship. Ship still making its way. We've got a little under two minutes left in this ascent burn, so we've got all six Raptor engines still firing. So the next the next major milestone we're going to be looking for is Seco. That's our second stage engine cutoff. That's uh, should be coming right at about 8 minutes and 58 seconds into flight, so we've got about a minute 20 still to go. Really cool to see Booster go through that uh, that landing burn. That was one of our like really key demonstrations we wanted to try and do today, um, is that's mimicking what we're going to be 
hopefully doing oh we just got our sonic boom sounds like from the booster <laughs> coming back all right less than a minute to go so we are going to see the three rvax the vacuum optimized engines shut down first and then we'll shut down those three center engines so we should be a little under a minute until seco just a reminder this is putting us into a suborbital trajectory so we're intentionally just going slow enough that we're not going to achieve full orbit. This puts us on a course where those engines shut off, and no matter what, we're coming back. Starship is in terminal guidance. In the Indian Ocean. All right, terminal guidance. So we should start seeing the shutdowns come up in just a couple seconds, less than 30 seconds to go in this ship of Sunburn. All right, our vacs have shut off. Three more to go. Ship engine cut off. All right, all ship Raptors have shut Nominal down. Nominal orbit insertion. You just heard nominal orbital insertion. So we are on the path that we wanted to be. So we've got a ship back in space, a whole lot ship planned for it. Lots more still to come. Great seeing Super Heavy make its way to the water. Uh, but I'm excited to see what ship can do in space. How's everybody doing down there? Yeah, if you could hear the crowd behind us this whole time, people are definitely happy with how the day's been panning out so far. Definitely exciting to see Starship safely in space and super pumped to see all the team's hard work in action here today. Yeah, and we guaranteed it at the start of the show, but it has been an awesome day so far. It's crazy. All this has happened in just 10 minutes. All the objectives were met on the booster, including that V3 style landing burn. So now all eyes are on the ship as we get ready for our in-space objectives. But we've got a few minutes until that next milestone, so sit tight, enjoy the views, enjoy the Space Jams. We'll be back at T plus 16 minutes for payload deploy. <laughs> 